Lake Champlain is a large freshwater lake that borders New York, Vermont, and Quebec. It stretches an impressive 125 miles long and 14 miles across at its widest point, with a maximum depth of approximately 400 feet, making it the Adirondacks' largest lake, with many fish and wildlife species calling it home, including a few endangered animals, such as the northern long-eared bat, lake sturgeon, and the Carner blue butterfly. There's also another creature that calls Lake Champlain its home, one that's more steeped in mystery and legends that may lurk in the deep depths of the lake. The lake monster, Champy. Hello everyone and welcome to Wicked Encounters, where we explore just what goes bump in the night. I'm your host, Allie, and today we're going to talk about the lake monster, Champy. Champy, or Champ as it is sometimes called, is North America's own Loch Ness monster. This beastie is described as possessing a serpent-like body with scales and a horse-like head, which is pretty similar to Champ's more popular cousin, Nessie. The two water creatures share many physical similarities that makes a good number of people wonder if the two may potentially be the same species. One of the current hypotheses floating around is that both Champy and Nessie are plesiosaurs, ancient carnivorous aquatic reptiles that lived from the Triassic to the Cretaceous period. While they were originally believed to have exclusively lived in salt water, it is now believed they spent much of their lives in fresh water thanks to the findings of fossils from at least 12 different plesiosaurs in a 100 million year old freshwater system that is now the Sahara. The discovery was made in 2022 by Dr. Longrish, a paleontologist and evolutionary biologist at the University of Bath, who found the fossil of a five foot long baby plesiosaur in a shop in Morocco, which he paid about $20 for. He brought the fossil back to Britain for further study, but advised that it will be returned to museums in Morocco at a later date. This is an important discovery because up until, well, when this discovery was made, one of the main reasons why people believed that Nessie couldn't be a plesiosaur is because Loch Ness is actually a freshwater lake. Granted, it was created only 10,000 years ago thanks to glaciers and ice movement, but At least this means it's kind of likely, in a way. At least the fact that plesiosaurs were living in fresh water, so... Yay! Like many North American cryptids, Champy does have some basis in Native American myths and legends. The Native American tribes that lived near Lake Champlain, the Abenaki and the Iroquois, had legends about a large creature that lived in the lake. It was called Tatoskok, or Gittiskog. Tatoskok is a type of Native American horned serpent, which are types of mythological freshwater serpents that were common to many tribes in the eastern United States and Canada. The legends vary from tribe to tribe, but the general description and behavior of the creatures remain the same. Horned serpents, like the Tatoskok, were described as huge, scaly, dragon-like serpents with horns and long teeth. At times, the serpents are able to move on land, but they're more often found in lakes and rivers. They possess supernatural abilities, such as shape-shifting, invisibility, the ability to control the weather, or hypnotic powers, and would often eat humans or provide powerful medicine to humans who defeated or helped them. Not sure I'd risk it, though. I mean, maybe if it was a life-and-death situation for someone I seriously cared about, but the chance of being eaten? Ooh, that's a big ask in my opinion. Horned serpents are interesting among Native American legends, as most animals like crocodiles and snakes are common in Native American folktales that involve the animal kingdom. But not the horned serpent. This could mean that Tatoskok is not based on an animal like many legends, but has always been viewed as a mythological creature. Over 300 sightings of Champy have been recorded throughout history, with one of the oldest from a European being in 1819, where a report in the Plattsburgh Republican titled K. 
Cape Ann Serpent on Lake Champlain, was released on July 24, 1819. In the report, a man named Captain Crum was aboard a scow on Balwaga Bay the previous Thursday and was said to have spotted an enormous serpentine monster raise its seahorse-shaped head up more than 15 feet out from the water. Crum estimated the creature to have been about 187 feet long and approximately 200 yards away from him. Despite the distance, he claimed that he could see that the monstrous-sized beast had three teeth and eyes the colored of peeled onions, as well as a belt of red around its neck and a white star on its forehead. We're going to skip a few years and go to 1873, which was a pretty big year for Champy, with quite a few sightings being reported. The New York Times published a story in regards to a railroad crew that had supposedly seen the head of an enormous serpent in Lake Champlain, with bright silvery scales that glistened in the sun. That same year in July, Clinton County's Sheriff Nathan H. Mooney reported seeing an enormous snake or water serpent that he estimated at being between 25 to 35 feet long. In the following month, the steamship W.B. Eddy had a run-in with the water creature by literally running into it, causing the ship to nearly overturn with tourists aboard. With so many sightings in such a short amount of time, It was no real surprise to anyone when a reward was offered for the Hide of the Great Champlain Serpent by showman P.T. Barnum, who offered $50,000 for the hide to add to his Mammoth World's Fair show. To put that into perspective, $50,000 in 1873, when the reward was offered, is the equivalent of... $1,271,287.50 today. Wow, maybe I'll go over to Lake Champlain and see if I can find it. But that reward's a bit higher now. Now, there is a story that has an early mention of Champy from a European, but it doesn't really convince me, which is why I didn't start out with it. But the story has an important bit to it. Now, supposedly, there was a sighting of Champy from the founder of Quebec and the lake's namesake, Samuel de Champlain, in 1609. Though this was a claim made by the summer 1970 issue of the magazine Vermont Life, where they quote Champlain as having said he witnessed a 20-foot serpent, thick as a barrel, and a head like a horse. While Champlain did document large fish in the lake, there isn't any document or research to back up the magazine's claim, making it most likely that this was a lie or an embellishment, potentially, to avoid a lawsuit, uh, to stir up interest among tourists. Without follow-up documents, it's hard to really call this reliable information, even when it comes to cryptids. But I think it definitely helped increase tourism and in the process, increase sightings of Champy especially with the help of a certain photo. Much like how almost everyone has seen the popular photo of the Loch Ness Monster raising its head from the waters of the loch, Champy 2 has its own famous photo. On July 5th, 1977, Sandra Mansi and her family were vacationing along Lake Champlain when Mansi noticed a shape in the water and snapped a photo of it. This photo came to be called the Mansi photo, and it's widely touted as being the best lake monster photo ever taken. In Lake Monster Mysteries, exploring the world's most elusive creatures, their scholarly study of lake monster traditions, Benjamin Radford and Joe Nickel, observed that the Mansi photo stands alone as the most credible and important photographic evidence of the existence of lake monsters, because its authenticity is held in such high regard by so many writers and researchers. Basically, it is viewed as a holy grail of proof of lake monsters and cryptids, and created an almost pilgrimage-like journey for journalists and cryptozoologists to visit the lake, and to Sandra Mansi specifically, to recount the tale of what she saw that day. But is it really a photo of Champ? For all the people who believe it is, many people have their doubts. Soon after the photo came to light in the fall of 1979, The original photo was sent to Philip Rines, a nautical expert at the State University of New York at Plattsburgh. The hope was that Rines would be able to authenticate the photo, 
but he immediately noted two crucial elements in verifying the photo that were missing. One, the photo negative, and two, the location. Sandra Mancy has always maintained that she had thrown away the negative for the photo, something that she says she would usually do once a photo was developed, but that was very unusual practice in that day and age, especially considering that the photo was potentially proof of a prehistoric dinosaur living in Lake Champlain. Most people who have photos of things, much less life-changing, would keep their negatives in case the photo was lost or if they wanted duplicates. An interesting development came up in regards to the negative when Vermont's official naturalist, Charles Johnson, had a letter revealed that was written in August 1980, where he wrote about concerns he had after talking to Anthony Mancy, who is Sandra Mancy's husband, separately. Anthony said that the couple actually buried or burned the photograph since their experience had been somewhat fearful. Somewhat fearful? Was the photo distressing to Mr. Mancy? If it was scary enough to destroy the negative, then why was it that in 1981, two journalists, Kermani and Smith, who interviewed Sandra Mancy separately, were told that the image was tacked to the kitchen bulletin board and shown to family and friends? I believe most people who find something so distressing wouldn't keep it in their kitchen or show it off to people so freely. It's just a very interesting inconsistency to have in regards to the negative. Now, for the missing location, the Mancys, for the life of them, could not recall where their famous photo was taken exactly, even though only a few years had passed. They confirmed that the photo was taken somewhere between St. Albans and the Canadian border, but that is only a length of 20 miles, with only so much shoreline between the two locations. It's hard to believe that Sandra wouldn't have been able to recall where they had stopped during their vacation, especially considering that she had spent a part of her early life in the area. While she had maintained that she cannot recall where the exact location of the photo was taken, Ben Radford, an author and contributor to over 20 books and over a thousand articles and columns on urban legends, myths, and cryptids, provided an audio interview that he and Joe Nickel conducted with Sandra in 2002, where she slips up and says, I know it's up. Well, I don't want it. I don't want it to get out where it was. Because of the idiots, you know. I knew once it got out, once the photograph got out there, I was so darn afraid that some idiot with a gun would go out there and shoot at something in the lake. This slip of the tongue seems to show that Sandra does indeed recall where she took the photo, though it does make one wonder why she would lie about such a thing. Could it be that she's actually worried about Champy potentially being harmed? Or could it be that it would reveal that the location of the photo would prove that it would have been impossible for such a massive creature such as Champy to have been seen in such an area? Who knows? The Mancys took back their photo from Reigns once it was clear he wouldn't be able to authenticate it through the insistence of their lawyer, where it remains in their hands today. Even if the Mancy photograph is a fake, it definitely left its impact, with the photo pushing a short-lived media frenzy that resulted in the creation of not one, but two bills in 1986 that protect Champy from harm in the Vermont and New York legislatures, which is pretty useless, but it was good publicity in regards to the revenue generating that it helped push. By 1992, there were a total of 180 reported sightings, with approximately 600 people claiming to have seen the creature. Even now, there are reported sightings that are in the double digits each summer of people who claim to have seen Champy in the lake, making Lake Champlain's popularity rise even more, turning the water monster into a revenue-generating attraction. In fact, in the village of Port Henry, New York, a giant model of Champ was erected, and Champ Day is held on the first Saturday of every August, which, by the way, is coming up in case you were interested in checking it out. Now, say Champy isn't a lake monster or an ancient dinosaur. What could it be? Well, there are a few theories that have been put forth that hold a good amount of weight. One belief is that the sea monster could actually be a misidentified animal, such as a giant eel or an otter garfish, or maybe even a lake sturgeon. Honestly, a lake sturgeon could be the likely culprit. These armored fish have been around since the time of the dinosaurs and can grow to impressive sizes, with one having washed ashore on the lake estimated to be six feet and nine inches long. 
and they have the same silvery coloration that many attribute to Champ. Another possible theory is obviously that Champy is just a hoax put together. That one doesn't need much explanation, since humans are a creative sort who enjoy pulling pranks and goofing on each other. But one of the other theories that I think holds some weight could be that the Mansi photo and sightings were caused by a log or a rising tree trunk. It's been to the point that models have been created to show how a tree trunk could have created a serpent-like shape and, well, most people can't estimate sizes correctly to save their lives, even if it's a part of their own body. Women know what I'm talking about. Personally, I think Champy is a fascinating topic and I had loads of fun researching him. I'd love to see Champy for myself someday, or at least get some nice, more credible evidence of its existence. A vacation to Lake Champlain would be nice in general, to be honest. What do you think? Do you believe in Champy? Have you ever seen Champy or know someone who claims to have? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more mysteries and legends. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!